Mario. Yes. Yes, dear. I look like Goose in this. I look like Goose. You can't tell me I don't look like Goose. He dies. So would I in these glasses. <laughs> Don't forget to hit. Ah. Good job. <laughs> Let's see what the magic book is. How has. much money? How much money are you giving to Gerald McCoy? Ooh. Well, Gerald McCoy left Cleveland without a contract. Um, if I can get Gerald McCoy, McCoy, he's got a lot more than a one year deal because he's, he's older, right? So he's fishing for a multi year deal. If I could get Gerald McCoy on two for 12, that's fine. Two for 12, I think, is fair. I think two for 12 is fair. Two for 12, six up front. So you're only, you're looking at, that's it, six mil even, both years. And the reason is because Jordan Phillips can play defensive end. I think you got time to get Phillips down to play defensive end. You have Lorenzo Alexander, Lorenzo Alexander, who you can slide out of sand to play defensive end to. You've got Eddie, like you've got ends, but they're not really ideal, right? You can play Lorenzo at end, you can play Eddie Arbor at end, you can play, you're not really loving any of these. You don't know if Trent Murphy's going to trip in the bathroom and hurt himself. You don't know all these things. So I think you have enough time to get Jordan Phillips in to play end. I think he's too big. What, Phillips? Well, McCoy's definitely too big to play at. I know. Yeah. But as of right now, our projected roster yeah. is ours. There's nobody else. Our projected roster has four defensive ends, four defensive tackles. Right. You bring in Gerald McCoy. Because of the construct of the cap and how the bills look next year, you're not giving him anyone's money no. that, that you're going to plan on re-signing. Right. So he's not going to infringe on that. Right. That's one. Two. We talked about it a little bit earlier, um, <clears throat> off camera. Jordan Boyer is the 13th highest paid player on your team, yep. and you just signed five guys that are making more money than him right now. You're going to have to rectify that situation sure. be before not too long, or he might hold out, or he might, you know. Counter counterpoint to that, yeah. you haven't done it in the secondary. No, like if you paid somebody in a similar position in the backfield to him. That, yeah. then I think you have a case. But when you're paying other positions, I think it's a little easier to float by. I agree that yeah. they're going to have to do something for Boyer at some point. Well, because they did. I mean, if they're going to stay consistent as an organization, and here's the thing that's kind of the curveball in it, they're going to pay you for what you're going to contribute, not what you already contribute. Right. Even though sometimes they'll do that, Kyle Williams, mm -hmm. Lorenzo Alexander. Mm -hmm. yeah, Zoe's going to contribute, however – there could have been younger options yeah. of what they were doing there, but that not was saying. Um, they're going to have to take care of that at some point. And if they think he can still contribute, you give the guy a two-year extension, you give him $10, $10, $10 million bonus because of what he's been doing. You're currently paying your two safeties $10 million combined for 2019, right. which is absurd. Yeah, Smart on your end. Oh, absolutely. Getting, getting back to McCoy, I think – I said this before. The Bills offer him something unique in the fact that they're not going to ask him to play every down, which extends his career. So I believe that not a two-year deal, maybe a three- or four-year deal. Because by the time he's done, you can get rid of him and re-sign Phillips. Harrison Phillips comes out. Okay. Maybe not four. I'm going to go back to three. Let me, okay. let me scale it back to three because that's when Phillips will be. Are you ready to sign, re -sign Phillips? But because of the rotational front that they have, you wouldn't really lose anything in there. And if you wanted to start testing the waters, and okay, we're gonna start, we're gonna start Lawson this year. We're gonna start Lawson, Star, Oliver, and Hughes. Hughes needs a breather. You bring in McCoy, you kick Oliver out the head. Yeah, just to try it out. Okay, all right, maybe, maybe this, maybe this could sure. work. Well, and. I think that's something that's a fascinating point to bring up because there was a lot of talk about Oliver playing 
You know, he played a lot of no's in college. Yeah. But really, he's a three technique. And for those of you that don't know what three technique is, that's just a player that lines up with a three gap. Every gap is a number, right? So that's the deal. It's, he's a three gap. You want to put him in, in, in the three because it's a three technique. So when you hear about a guy being a zero technique, that's a nose, right? That somebody plays boom, right over center because it's not in a gap. Right? Even, even numbers are head up. Right. Odd numbers are in the gaps or off the shoulders. Right. So that's the deal. For those of you that, that hear the three technique, zero technique, five technique, that's that's what they're referring to. Four technique, that's what they're referring Crane to. Crane technique. No. Called crane technique. Have you been watching Cobra Kai? No, I haven't. No? All right. I was just thinking of techniques. Don't sweat the technique. No? There's an old joke that I know. Are you ready to? Are you ready for this? I know many forms of karate. The crane, the snake, the beetles. <laughs> I have no idea where I know that from. It might have been in a movie. It might have been a sitcom. I have no idea. I just I've known that almost my whole life. I cannot believe. <laughs> That that <laughs> remained on the damn shelf, <laughs> but you can't remember a goddamn conference. <laughs> There's some things I'm just not good at. Son of a biscuit. <laughs> Minchie biscuits. Minchie biscuits. So I Ooh, do. Biscuit. I do want to bring up that the the cool thing about Oliver getting getting back to a point. Yeah. The cool thing about Oliver is the fact that. Since he's coming right from his college career and getting right into Buffalo, they don't have the ability to weight control, right? So yes. that's one thing that you hear people say in the pre-draft process is, well, they need to put a little bit of weight on this guy. Well, you don't really have that kind of time. From draft to, to game day, you can't really control their body type like that. So whatever you're drafting is what you're getting. You're not really going to be able to do too much over the course of the, from the draft to, to game day. You can't do that much. So... They can body – what they have with Ed Oliver is they do have a guy that's fit enough to play the outside, and that's what he was trying to show at the combine. Yes. And in his pro day was that he could play defensive end. And I think he's quick enough to do that, right? But you're looking at replacing Sheck Lawson with him, not Jerry Hughes, right? I'm that's, just going to say, that that sounds so intriguing because depending on where they decide to go, because the two names that are floated out the most, uh -huh. Clowney, yeah. McCoy. Very different, right? Exactly. You get Very McCoy – you, you you now, how would you feel about the, the like you just said, the possibility of Hughes, McCoy, Starr, and Oliver on the other side? Good Lord. That just that just screams like crazy. And then you can rotate Phillips and you can right. rotate. But the, the thing, getting back, I think because of that rotational front you have, you extend McCoy's career and you have him, but you don't overspend. For, you're not going to overspend no. for him. I said that the max would have been eight. Yeah. Per year, which is generous. That's very generous. That's very I, generous. Two for 12 for me is, that's a stretch. But, I mean, I think most teams are probably talking to him at one for four, one well, for three. Because a lot of teams don't have a ton of room. They don't want to commit. What did Sue get signed for? Because that's going to matter. Uh, look it up. Uh, the thing, let me ask you this. And this is the only thing, this is the only thing, something that a Bills fan could answer. Would he be the defensive equivalent to Ty Nisecki? If you sign them, because you're signing the Seki for like six, seven a year, aren't you? Didn't he get two for fourteen? Yeah, I think so. Would you be comfortable with that? Ooh. <laughs> Is he the defensive equivalent to Ty Nasecki? I think you need to ask yourself that question. If he's more valuable than that, uh, we already have a really top flight defense. He'd be a bonus at this point. One year, nine point five was Sue. So they save four million. Yeah. By cutting McCoy and getting sued. Right. Wow. So, but everybody's going to be asking McCoy, around that. Yeah, but everybody agreed that McCoy was overpaid because of the length of the contract anyway. But that's not the point. I agree that that's what he's going to be asking for. Oh, yeah. But once, you, once the rubber starts to meet the road, you start looking at length of deals, not just one year deals. McCoy's I, not in a position where he should be taking the highest paid one year. Deal. No, no, no. But I'm I'm liking the I, I like the idea of him. Oh, sure. I'm all about the idea of him. Do the Bills need him? No. 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 Getting him? Interesting. Yeah. Clowny? Intriguing. Well, you sign think of it this way, right? You bring on McCoy, whose job does that cost you? Who's Who, gone? Yeah, who's gone? Frazier? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs>
I think one of the, um, depending on how, how good you feel at the defensive front versus defensive ends, honestly, this is probably the most extreme. You give him Murphy's contract. Murphy's going to cost you a little bit of money. Murphy's going to cost you a little bit of money to get rid of. I know. So we're looking at keeping four defensive ends, right? And with McCoy, you'd have to bump that down. Now you're only carrying three. Well, are you are him. you registering Alexander? Alexander no, that's the back no, one. you're not. So you have that ability, right? Exactly. Sorry, so not taking really Murphy carrying, out, right? So keeping Murphy, you're carrying Lawson, Murphy, Hughes, plus one. Who's the plus one? Carborough. Who's your plus one? Probably Yarbrough. Probably Yarbrough. Or Harold. Oh, uh, but he's, yeah, but he's a linebacker. No, he's, okay. I think he's, he's, he's a like, hybrid. He has, he has him as a linebacker. I think he's the understudy to Alexander. I agree. As so that's why I'm saying that you can get rid of a true defensive end. Oh, boy. What do we do? I think it's Yarbrough. You think? I think Yarbrough's the guy gone. Is he's he a practice squad? Not anymore. He's 25. Not anymore. No? no not anymore. I like Yarbrough, too. I do like Yarbrough. I agree. But you bring in McCoy, and you do have, you do create yourself a little bit of a problem. But you bring up a, a great counterpoint. You're really hiding some defensive ends of the linebacker position, <laughs> right, yeah. right? You yeah. got Lorenzo Alexander, who you are assuming is going to be playing in pass rush roles, whether that's a linebacker position or as a true hand the dirt DE. Yeah. You have Eli Harold, who you're assuming you're going to do the same thing with. Yes. Right. So you're really hiding some defensive ends at linebacker right now because he didn't really address the Sam role. Didn't really do that, so you have to assume that they're it's more going to be of a pass rush role. But the Bills blitzed so little last year; they only blitzed like twenty percent. Mm-hmm. So you have to assume at some point that you know you bring in McCoy, you don't really need him. But does he make your team worse? Nope. Does the roster spot you lose because of him put your team in a, in a less flexible place? I think that's more important for the Bills than anything is does adding McCoy lose flexibility in your roster? And I think the case could be made that, yeah, it does. I think in what way? Because you, you lose that defensive end. You're going to start depending on the depth at other positions to give you that pass rush. Okay. So I think it does it does hurt your flexibility because you're only asking to play three times. That's you're all you're asking. Well, if you're planning on getting home at four and you're able to get teams behind schedule, it doesn't matter who you put a defensive end. Yeah, but I think that's in an ideal world, Mario. You know, like that's not an ideal world. No, I think that's in an ideal world. Oh yeah. You know, that's I think that's kind of the problem is you want to this this team loves versatility and flexibility, and McCoy isn't that at this point in his career. You don't think so? I don't think so. What about I, I don't think. Jordan Phillips is the defensive end, like you stated. I don't think he, I think he's I think he's a horse. I think he's a Starlin Tulele uh, understudy. What I'm saying is this: or if you were to sign him now, because he's a vet, you could get his weight to a point where you could you could play him a little bit more of a defensive end role. Okay, had to. Uh, yeah. you have the time before the season now to get his weight under control. And believe me, you tell these guys, listen, we need you to take off ten pounds. These guys can take off ten pounds because the amount of the amount of food that they need to consume to stay at play oh, weight God. is absurd. Joe Thomas was the worst. It's yeah. Look he at, said look he used at to, him now. I know he's, he's like a stick. He said he used to eat a sleeve of Girl Scout cookies and drink a gallon of milk at night. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm surprised Eric Wood is still as big as he is. Is he? Eric Wood yeah, is still a wide boy. He's still really wide. Is he still living in Buffalo? Yeah. He just got, <laughs> yeah. That's easy. Yeah. Right? That was an easy fix. Um, we got Thursday night wings. <laughs> Do I like McCoy for Buffalo? How can you not? Like it's you intriguing. Have to, you have to ask yourself: Is it ver- or is he versatile enough to provide your defense with enough flexibility for this? You know, for this I, team? I, I don't know about that. I think if you're still questioning the defensive end spot, and you were thinking of getting Oliver some more good defensive end. Mm-hmm. Now, does the Hughes signing say that you're you're not going to put him on that side? You're going to want him to stay at his weight. Because at his current weight, he can play the other defensive end. Uh, Oliver? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, You'd have to drop 15 to go to Hughes' spot. Right. Yeah, you're not. No, but you he's a defensive that. tackle. Yeah, he's, you don't He's want a that. money-made three technique. Right. And he's phenomenal there. He's still quick enough to play end right now at the weight that he's at. I think you're looking to just keep yeah. him where he is, and that'll be fine. Um, but if that was in your long-term plans to have him eventually go to the outside, a three-year deal from McCoy – 
which wouldn't infringe on any guys you have to sign next year, and it doesn't create any havoc in the locker room. And McCoy seems like a guy who would embrace that role. I mean, well, there's not very many options for him right well, now. Hold on, hold on. So you're telling me that the Bills would draft a player who plays who who could dominate inside, but would play him at an outside position? Oh, that's unheard of. Are you referencing Jones or Edmonds? I'm talking about Deion Dawkins. 